Good day, and welcome to SharePoint Performance mini series. Today we're going to be dealing with Season 1, Episode 5, which is the CDN summary and also optimizing connectivity, uh, so network connectivity to use CDNs. As for the other seasons or the other episodes, should I say, um, I suggest you watch them if you want to go in more details on CDNs. This one's really going to focus on a very brief summary and then also just coverage into uh, what you should be looking for from a networking perspective. You don't need to be a networking person to be watching this. In fact, this is targeted at SharePoint team who now need to obviously go to their networking or infrastructure team to actually get uh, and understand to make sure the settings are correct. So as we go through the agenda, you'll see that it's an overview and summary, optimizing connectivity, and then as well as uh, verifying, you know, hey, it's, yes, it's using CDNs or it's not. And in that, as part of that, I'll summarize in the end as well. Right, so very briefly, uh, why do we use CDNs? So if you look at this uh, map, uh, what you'll see is in the, in the right-hand side over here, we have United Kingdom with a user based out of there. Um, notice this is an edge node mention. I'm not gonna go into too much on that. And here we have a US user also with the edge node uh, noted there. Um, and in this particular case, the green lines are the Microsoft network um, as it connects into the data center. And in this particular case, the data center is in North America and it looks to be around about Chicago. Now, without CDNs, the following would be your traffic. And I'll go through very quickly. I make a call to a page. From that page, I have, let's say, 10 images, or even one image, whatever it is, or a JavaScript file or a CSS file. And when I make the call, it actually traverses across the entire network until it comes back to the user in the UK. Now, obviously, from that perspective, the latency or the, the performance through that would be pretty, pretty, pretty laggy and pretty slow. And the same would happen for United States users, as you can see there. What you're seeing is that it's actually going down to, again, across the network. Yes, it may be a little bit faster to the US user in this particular case because of obviously the shorter haul, but not using CDNs, obviously, you can imagine 10 of those. Um, so you're in 10 one meg files, for example, coming down. That's 10 megs that it's got to traverse across this line and therefore have poor performance for that. So the, here we come along with CDNs, and as you'll see in the UK, the same file accessed, even though you've made a call to the web page, which technically is coming from the SharePoint data center, it actually is actually reading those any files in CDN at the closest point. And in this case, the CDN, um, if we send the UK here, the CDN is close to that, to that location. They would then experience obviously a far greater throughput than if it was coming all the way across the line. It's also the fact that it's HTTP2 and it's, uh, and therefore also you have more threads from the browser and therefore obviously uh, it's for modern browsers um, like Edge, Chromium, Edge, or even Chrome itself. And the same would happen for the US user and you would see that that would then pull from the location closest to the user. So therefore centralizing your traffic through a central proxy, I'll go into a little bit more, um, would also not make sense in this particular scenario because if all the users here did that, they wouldn't be using this Microsoft network. And you'll note the little note here about pre-existing connection. What that means is we reuse that connection. So you don't have to have a three-way handshake of an ACK, a SYN and an ACK to actually then go uh, and then obviously send the traffic. That connection is kept alive and therefore it actually reutilizes that. And you have obviously better throughput. Just a quick slide on CDNs here. I'm not going to go through each point, but the main thing here is CDNs or content delivery networks. Um, you have the two main ones we talk about here is public and private. Where public is not that it, um, it's, it's not associated to your tenant. It is always associated to your tenant, but it is not locked down to your tenant, meaning I don't need to be authenticated. I do have to be coming from a SharePoint location. If I happen to have the URL, someone would have to give me that URL. Whereas in private, it's a 60 minute lifespan. It is cookie based on the first user accessed and it changes. Um, so whatever you do, don't try you reuse private and try and think you can hard code a private CDN. It will change every 60 minutes and you will experience file not found errors because that location is no longer available after that point. And again, for someone to actually get to that, you would actually physically have to go and copy that long URL, try and share it out, then try and actually get there, and it's, it's, it's obviously a far more secure um, configuration. Right, so let's just jump straight in. Uh, that's what this session is really about, is optimizing connectivity. 
So if you'll see on the left there, what you'll see is that we have the actual URL, the short URL to get to the, this list that you see on the right. What you'll see about this list is that there's a SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business list, and there's an Office 365 common list as well. Now, depending on what services you're going to use, if you're just using SharePoint and OneDrive, you need to obviously use the SharePoint Online and OneDrive list and the common list. And you merge those together, and those, those items should be listed in your proxy bypass list. You'll notice we provide the IPs and we provide the URLs. Please use the URLs as the IPs do, are subject to change. Whilst we do have a service where we publish these, changes, we publish these changes to, the problem is that it's a pretty complicated process for you to go and update the IPs that do bypass all the time. So we provide you with the URLs. You'll notice they got wildcards, and you'll notice they're specific to uh, Microsoft. You'll also see in some of these, you'll see Akamai. Um, in particular, I know there's a quite a small view on that, that you're seeing, but if you go to that link, you'll have a detailed list of these. And these, your networking team should follow and actually make sure that you bypass the proxy. Now, from a perspective, it could be an online proxy service. It could be an internal proxy that you have. Um, and typically, issues and common scenarios we see in this is that a networking team will, in fact, interrogate the traffic uh, going to Office 365. So we're taking the fact that you have a secure connection already to Office 365 via HTTPS um, and a 2048 encryption. And now there's a, there's a level of decryption and encryption in the way because, you know, the, sort of the old networking standard was, hey, we need to, we need to interrogate all traffic that goes through our, our network. Now to Office 365, if I've already got a secure connection, we recommend not interrogating the traffic, making sure you bypass your proxy service to get to SharePoint Online and Office 365. Because all that is doing is causing increased latency um, and in fact, there are some scenarios where you would actually experience issues because um, it's actually impacting the overall paid load, page load. It's impacting your downloading documents, opening documents, all of these factors, simply because of not following these online, this online guidance. It is a well-published set of guidance. You'll notice the second link on the, on the left as well talks about the tuning site. And that's really for the overall O365 guidance. Um, you'll see it talks about Exchange, talks about Skype, it talks about SharePoint, OneDrive, common uh, settings. You'll see often we refer to CDN and Akamai. Akamai is currently the hosting provider that we have and we utilize around the world. Um, you'll notice that there's private cdn.sharepointonline.com. You'll notice that there's public cdn.sharepointonline.com, uh, SPO prod, and you'll notice in the middle it says Akamai HD.net. And those are all valid CDN locations, but this list is updated regularly and should be something as part of your networking checks that you do um, with your networking team. Now, what you'll see next as we go on is I'm going to actually take you through and show you um, how to actually verify the use and the fact that you are using CDNs. So let me hop over and what I've got here is a simple uh, one of our Microsoft websites. Um, and in that I'm going to hit um, the F12 feature to get through to the developer tools. Um, and I've already preloaded this, but effectively you don't need to be a developer to hit F12 and view it. You simply refresh the page. It will then load, and what you're seeing is all of the calls that are made to, to generate this page. Now, some of the key things, and I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can actually see it. Um, and I'll zoom into this one very quickly. And what you're going to see over here is, obviously, there's the JavaScript files. Um, and I want to just try and show you that URL in a bit more detail so as we zoom into it there. And what you'll notice as we look at it is that the first one shows us the Akamai HD.net URL. And that is, obviously, as I said before, is one of the URLs. So you know that that's our SharePoint service ones that we're actually, we, we as Microsoft have set and are using. Um, and as I go over the next one, what you'll see there is that it's actually showing you a an additional one, which is going to be uh, the public cdn.sharepointonline.com. Uh, and that's showing that for that particular asset, we are actually looking at and using the public CDN for that purpose. It's a very quick check, but the key thing that you need to do there is make sure you go through all of your JavaScript, all of your CSS, all of your images on the page, 
and make sure they are pulling from CDN when they're supposed to be. Now, there are scenarios, as I mentioned in the other episodes, um, where that won't be possible. So, for example, if you've directly referenced a file um, directly from your client side code or your, or from your script, we aren't going to be able to rewrite the URL with CDN. It is simply not possible today. If you look at episode four, however, I show you how to actually do a certain amount of that as long as you're using public CDN, you can actually use an almost hard-coded um, URL, but we don't want you to hard-code it, so we provided you with a property that you can actually use for that. Right, so just jumping back and going over um, the remaining portions of this is to talk about and, and just do a summary of your network um, and how to connect to CDN. So first of all, verify with your firewall and networking team. Obviously, they need to be deeply involved in this process and they need to follow that bypass proxy list. Um, to ensure that, number one, you have good connectivity through to Office 365, all up. Also that the Akamai locations are, we include those in our list, but a lot of people exclude them when they're actually trying to set up and actually bypass proxy. We provide you the exact details needed for you to actually know that those are Microsoft specific locations required for best connectivity to our services. And then checking the use and performance. Obviously, um, Something that you've got to consider is that these CDNs, make sure, first of all, the files are appropriately reading from CDN, um, but if they're taking extensive amount of time to render, I mean, over half a second to render a file is pretty, pretty lengthy, um, particularly if you have 10 or 12 or 15 files some, in some cases on the page, um, I would then look at your network and see what is causing it. We typically see about 100 to 500 milliseconds um, for CDN rendering time, but it does depend on your connectivity traffic and so on. So just make sure, you know, if there's big differences, downloading, check from an outside location, see that it's not your own network causing the bottleneck, um, could, that could definitely hamper performance for you. Thank you once again for watching Season 1, Episode 5, uh, the last in this particular season, uh, particularly focused on CDNs. Some helpful links, as usual, are in the end for you to actually go through and look at, and these are helpful links for you to get to the information that you need. Thanks once again for watching. Goodbye.